So a dominant Lewis Hamilton performance gave him his 97th win at the Formula One Portuguese Grand Prix, whilst track limits cost his title rival a point for fastest lap. Welcome back to the Formula One Grid Top podcast. Today we'll be taking a look at what happened in today's race at the Algarve International Circuit. My name is Ruby Price and joining me today are Monkey Seat podcast host Tom Horrocks. Hello. F1 experts Alex Booth. Hello. And Sam Thatcher. Hi guys. Hi. So first, Grid Talk is now powered by Manscaped. Use the code GRIDTALK20 to get 20% off your first order. Secondly, if you enjoy the podcast, we would love it if you could take five to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And finally, with many of the F1 Chronicle team having first-hand experience of online hatred, we believe the time for change is overdue and it is time to make a stand. As such, we will be standing in solidarity with everyone who has been a victim of online abuse and have been boycotting social media this weekend. So, Tom... Lewis had to make some fantastic moves to secure that win. What would you say gave him the advantage over his competitors? I think he just underlined once again just what a great champion he is. Uh, he he controlled the race well when he was there. Uh, he did. He, the, the thing that presses me most about Lewis is how he recovers from his mistakes as well because he did have a bit of a blunder. Um, he did make a mistake today, just the one, but to then come back and uh, to come back recover make two passes, one of which on his teammate, uh, and just keep the tyres in the uh, in the window, pull a gap, and and just react to everything. Uh, once again, just um, just just showed his his class overall. So really, it's his it's his pace, it's his composure, and it's his ability to recover from mistakes. Mm. And Sam, I'm going to stick on Lewis for a little bit longer, just because such a good drive. You know, he made some fantastic moves and. You know, let's talk about that move that he made on uh, Max Verstappen to get second place at the time. You know, having to commit all the way to the right. You know, if Verstappen went a little bit further, that's Lewis in the wall. Yeah. Um, so we saw off the uh, safety car restart that um, Lewis was a bit surprised, but I think Valtteri went quite slow off the restart and then Lewis got a bit surprised, which put Max in prime position to take the pass from him at that point. But then a couple of laps late it was Max who got a bit out of shape coming out of the last corner and um yeah Lewis just got a march on him and uh yeah as you said pure commitment to go to the right hand side and hold the move on the inside and after that yeah he didn't really look back he didn't really see uh, Max getting past him once he'd done that move and then yeah he's looking forward to his teammate after that um and then as we always see with when Lewis is behind Valtteri um He's never more than a second behind him. Is he? He's always like holding that gap. He's holding his tires, and you just don't. When it's the other way around, you just don't see that. And I think that's the mark of just uh, as Tom said, just how how good Lewis is and how he's still at the top of this game, and how how he's just done it for year year on year out. And I, I think he's still going to win the title this year. At the end of it. It's certainly going to be close if uh, it continues the way it's been going. So, Alex, let's talk about his title rival, Max Verstappen, coming home in second. Obviously, the timesheet says nearly half a minute behind, but you know that's because he pitted for fastest lap and then missed out on that because of some track limits. But you know, a good performance for Max Verstappen, not accepting third place. Um. It was it was a good performance from Max Verstappen, but I do think it's quite ominous because we've been talking uh, at the start of the season that Red Bull have really closed the gap to Mercedes, and Mercedes keep saying that they're not the fastest and like that. I don't think that's true. I think um, Mercedes clearly are the fastest. Uh, they've clawed back at any disadvantage they had, and uh, and I think today was proof of that. And uh, uh, it was quite disappointing the race today. To be fair, it wasn't the best race ever. Let's, let's be really honest. Um, it was a, it was a perfect drive from Hamilton. Verstappen um, did the best he could, um, but uh, yeah, it was it was it was it was it was a dominant drive from Hamilton, and uh, and Verstappen second. And uh, I hope I'm wrong, but I've got a big suspicion that, that will be the uh, the way the season pans out. Mm. Uh, hopefully not, but. Anyway, uh, Tom, Valtteri Bottas finishing P3. Very disappointing for Valtteri after the high that he had yesterday. But, you know, it's sort of a bit like last year all over again at Portugal as well. 
Yeah, I think uh, his teammate has definitely got uh, got the edge on him on this track. I mean, I think uh, I said on on last week's podcast on this podcast that uh, I thought Bottas would uh, would recover and take pole, but um, but he would not win the race and probably not even be on the podium. So I was uh, pretty close on that. Um, I, th- I think just to touch slightly on what Alex said a second ago about his concerns about the season. I think they're a little bit. A um, little bit premature at the moment because this time last year, Mercedes won the race genuinely by 30 seconds. Uh, today, uh, they won by 34 seconds, but Verstappen taking an extra stop. And they were so dominant last year, whereas this year, Red Bull were a lot closer. They would have been within four or five seconds at the end. And really, it was just one mistake from, from Verstappen allowing Hamilton to get past, which changed the race. Um, so I, I don't think it's quite the doom and gloom at the moment of another dominant Mercedes race I think it's just it's going to to and fro all season I still think we're in for a cracker uh, but back to back to Bottas I think as well where he had that moment where he lost power um, around sort of the closing stage of the race that's that dropped him what dropped him away from the uh, away from the fight uh, that was the the key moment of the race where where he lost he lost any chance of, of um, getting that one too uh, and uh, but I, th- I think he's gone some way to to justifying his position within the team because at the moment, you know, all all this week and last week, all I was hearing was about how he doesn't deserve to be in that car, uh, and I think he's gone some way today to to showing Joe you know what he can be in this fight. He could be the person that gets Mercedes that constructors championship. Um, he's done nothing to prove that he can win the title this weekend, but he's definitely uh, shown that he can be that perfect wingman, which is not what he wants to be. But what he wants ideally is to be in the best car to prove that he can he can win the title, and he's not going to do that unless he puts in performances at the minimum like this today. So I think he'll be uh, relieved that he didn't like carry on down the spiral that looked like he might he could well have done. But he'll also be disappointed in his own uh, performance against his teammate. Yeah, and I think he got a bit unlucky being obviously on cold tires, well cold ish tires as he came out of the pits uh, just ahead of Max Verstappen, but you know, lost it going into turn four. Um, but yeah, so Sam, uh, Sergio Perez, P4, driver of the day, but, you know, he started P4 as well and did lose a lot of time behind Lando Norris. Yeah, the, the driver of the day, that's, that's a quite, a, quite a dodgy title, to be honest. I don't really think he deserves that, to be honest. Um, well, we saw off the start, he was kind of struggling with his tyres, wasn't he? He didn't really get the power in it. So that's where he fell, um, fell behind uh, Lando at the start, and then that took him out of like the uh, out of the race for the win, really, and able to help Max against two Mercs. Um, then there was a bit of controversy with, uh, or we didn't know whether Lando kind of went off the track to get that position off him at the start. I'm not pretty sure if it's been cleared up or not. I've watched it um, back. He did go off the circuit, sadly. <laughs> okay, yeah, and it, but then again, it looked. Um, it looked there a few laps later. A few laps later, it was a very easy pass from for, for, for Checo to get past Lando. Um, so that put him back and forth, and then yeah, he was there for the rest of the race. Um, and then as soon as we kind of saw him kind of go long in the race, we knew what was going to happen. They were going to kind of kind of leave him out there, maybe to try and hold up Lewis, um, so maybe Max could get close to him. Um, but yeah, it was well, it was quite unlucky to be honest with the fastest lap because. If, if Valtteri was a bit closer to like Lewis and Max, um, as Tom was saying, um, then Valtteri might not have even attempted for the fastest lap, to be honest. Um, so I think he's a bit unlucky not to have the fastest lap. And he is still getting used to this car as his third race with the team. I think we've got to get, we'll give him a bit more time to like, get as one with the car and one, one with the team. Um, but to be honest, this is where he needs to finish. Fourth is the least that Red Bull expects from him. Um, this is why they brought him to the team, isn't it? Because Albon wasn't quite cutting it. He wasn't. He wasn't doing this every race. Um, so I think I think finishing fourth is is like the least he can do, really. Yeah, fourth fourth or higher is uh, any of the well drivers that finished in the top four today's uh, ambitions. Um, some of which second or higher, or maybe even first or higher, if that's even possible. So Alex, let's move on to Lando Norris P five. Um, a bit of an ambiguous one after he uh, let Checo back through, but you know, it, still a pretty strong performance for the McLaren driver. He was getting his elbows out at the start, and uh, it was it was very pleasant to watch, and and the and he's performed brilliantly uh, in the after the first two races, and today, yeah, it, it didn't go so well with the, with the uh, the track limits. He had to give that position to Perez back, 
Um, but he got the best that he, he could out of the car all weekend, and uh, it was a great performance by him. And, uh, when I when Ricardo was coming to McLaren, I, I understand this season uh, it's difficult to to move teams because of the limited testing and and stuff like that. But I, I thought that um, Norris would have his work cut out with Ricardo, but he's really showing that um, he's not intimidated by him, and he's getting the better of him. Certainly on race day. Um, and, and it looks like he's going to continue to do that. And today was another example of just what a talent he is. Yeah, still, absolutely. He's still ahead of um, Bottas in the championship as well. He's still third, <laughs> I believe, which is crazy, to be honest. He's still I in the title fight, I believe. There is a DNF uh, on Bottas's uh, record, but still a very good point. Um, but that Norris versus Ocon battle on the first lap was something you know, to behold. So, Tom, uh, P6, Charles Leclerc, uh, said he wasn't happy with where he finished in uh, post-race interviews, but, um, you know, P6 and a Ferrari that started in P8, almost best of the rest. Yeah, I, I think the best case scenario would have been just one more place further up, to be honest. Uh, I think he would have been targeting. He was all over the back of Norris at various points in the race. Um, he, uh, he managed to... Um, uh, he passed Ocon at the restart um, after, I think, did Ocon go past him at the start? I can't remember. Um, but he did, He got Ocon at the restart. Uh, he was the first to stop on the mediums, so he was given a bit of a bit of a hard job. Um, and, uh, and as I said, yeah, we, he, uh, he breezed past, he breezed past Sainz because Sainz, I think, had a bit of a, bit of a duff strategy there from Ferrari. I mean Science definitely had the definitely had the pace at times, but it just had the wrong the wrong setup there. So I think Ferrari got something to uh, to answer for there. But I think as as I said, yeah, that, that car looks every bit the match for the McLaren, but McLaren at the moment just just holding on. Um and uh, and stretching their lead as well, uh above Ferrari to for that third place. But I think they can definitely take a lot of a lot of um uh a lot of solace in the fact that they are still on pace with the McLaren. They still Managed to finish ahead of the Alpines that looked particularly strong today, and the you know the Alpha Tories did their usual trick of blowing a good car, so um, they can be happy with the performance. But they need to start closing that gap to McLaren if they want to uh, if they want to make that fight all season. But I think that Ferrari are going to have more of a more of an ability to develop. So um, I for me I think they're still shading the favourites for third place at the moment, uh, unless Daniel can can get his act together and, and start matching and beating Norris on occasion. But yeah, I th- I, I'm surprised that he's not happy with his performance, to be honest, because I say one, one more position further up the road uh, and he would have maximised. So uh, it's certainly, certainly not a bad performance anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So Sam, moving on to Esteban Ocon in the Alpine, uh, P7, a good result for um, a team that do need to bag in some results. Yeah, no, this was a great weekend from him, especially because... Um, it was like all throughout every practice session in qualifying, he was constantly in the top 10. Um, and it's really impressive to see that after, because last season was quite mediocre from Ocon, if we're honest, he was, a, he was good at some races, but it's obviously still getting used to the car, but now he looks like he's, uh, he's fully hit his stride. He's, uh, and this weekend was just a great performance from him. P7 made some good overtakes. So you said the battle with Norris, um, on the first, that was great. And yeah, he put in moves on the Claire science. Um, to put him in and a gas lead to put him in uh, P7. Um, and he said um, in uh, in Imola, the Alpine did not look good at all. We looked very, very slow. It looked kind of fine with like the Astons, but no, here they look, they look a lot better, um, which is good to see because um, this team, time and time again, we, we think, we think they're going to get, get good. We think they're going to get good and they don't. Um, and we'll see. I think, I think because, Obviously, Spain next week is not too dissimilar of a track to this. Um, I think they're going to have a new, um, another good weekend there. So, yeah, a very good performance from Ocon, especially this weekend. He was definitely better than Alonso all weekend, I thought. Yeah, and speaking of Alonso, in P8, Alex uh, very much came alive in the second half of this race. You know, he wasn't really anywhere for the first part, but once he pitted for those hard tyres, it was like seeing the old Alonso again. Yeah, that's true. Um, I was going to say he could be a contender, really, for my drive of the day because of, of um, his performance in the second half of the race. He, he seemed fairly conspicuous by his absence from um, 
you know, the, the top 10 in terms, because in qualifying, he wasn't, he wasn't really on it. And at the start of the race, he, he looked a lot, a lot, a lot behind the pace. But then, uh, as you mentioned, the, the, uh, the tire change came and, uh, and he was on fire and he was pulling maneuvers. And, uh, and I think that's what Alonso was, it, it, it's his, it, it's what he's really enjoying doing. We saw it in Bahrain before he, he retired. He was, he was getting his, he was getting stuck in. He was, he was overtaking people. Uh, Imola wasn't a very good race for Alpine, uh, as Sam mentioned, but uh, here they were a lot stronger. Um, I think if Adalonso qualified a, a, bit, a bit higher up the grid, he might have, he would have inevitably been higher in, in the in the race classification. Um, but they're signalling their intent. They were they were a lot better, and um, and as for Alonso, it was great to see. It was great. It was great to see that the man that we all know that he's capable of doing it, uh, showing what he can do on the track, and, and we've got a good example of that. Yeah, absolutely. So, Tom, moving on to Daniel Ricciardo, McLaren Mercedes started well, started sixteenth uh, and finished ninth. So, um, points—that's a positive for him. Absolutely, and ahead of a Ferrari, which would have been the uh, would have been the absolute aim. Um, again, behind behind the Alpines, but fortunately Norris was was up there doing the business. So, net gain for McLaren overall. Yeah, he uh, he went about his business very well today. He uh, he gained three places on lap one, which is a great start, uh, and he was up to uh, up up to eleventh by lap ten. Um, his only mistake all day really was overshooting his marks on his pit lane, which uh, on his pit stop, which. Uh, which um, allowed uh, one of the Alpines to get past him. I, I've, from memory, I can't remember who it was. Uh, he uh, they uh, he got passed by some cars towards the end because they had fresher tyres, but he was able to get past Carlos Sainz late on. Um, so um, overall, as a, the only real mistake he made all day was the uh, was the, was overshooting his marks in the pit lane and a poor qualifying, well recovered. Um, for just the driver of the day, he's definitely in the conversation, along with a few others, which I'm sure we'll come to later. Um, but no, I, th- I think he'll be overall happy. He just needs to sort his qualifying out now, and and uh, and I think he's he's starting to get to grips with that car. Monaco will be the place to watch him, I think. Mm, Monaco might actually be a very tasty race, well, at least qualifying session this season. Um, but Sam, uh, Pierre Gasly, last of the points runners, P10. Um it's kind of gone backwards, but also not really, given it's uh, mostly just Vettel that's behind him that was ahead. Yeah, of him. it was a it was a quiet it was a quiet race from him, wasn't it? We didn't we didn't really see a whole lot of what he did. Um, I think once again it's Alpha Tauri. They they just did, did he start on the soft tires? Am I am I wrong there? I'm not too sure. You might I think he started on the softs. Guys, yeah. started on the softs, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, as well as science, yeah, Gasly started on the softs, which, which we saw what happened to science wasn't um, wasn't the greatest strategy here with with how because obviously Pirelli bought the the um, the hardest tires they could have done to this weekend, which I don't think created for the best race personally, but that's a whole other whole other topic, isn't it? What Pirelli are doing? Um, but yeah, Gasly started on the wrong tires really. So. Uh, and as we saw, Sainz was not able to finish in the points, which um, which we'll come on to. But yeah, Gasly, I think he can be happy with this P10 because because of the strategy. Um, and and once again, it's like um, in the last race, he somehow finished in P7. He somehow finished in the points today. So I think he can be very happy with that. Um, Alpha Tauri, I think they could be doing better than what they are. Um, to be honest, it just seems as though they're they're mucking up the strategy every weekend, which is odd. Alpha Tauri taking the um, influence from Ferrari's uh, strate- strategic decisions last season, yeah. it would seem. Just so, Italian, Al- just Italian teams. <laughs> um, I don't know what's wrong with them. So Alex, uh, Carlos Sainz P11, last of the non-lapped runners, but as soon as he went onto those medium tires, that w- that just seems to have been it for Carlos Sainz uh, today. Yeah, it was a shame. He qualified extremely well, and uh, and. You know, we we've mentioned that uh, Ferrari are, uh, are looking better than they were in 2020, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, Leclerc is, uh, well, Leclerc's familiar with the team a lot more than science is, which which will, will give him a, a lot of an advantage. But uh, um, yeah, it didn't it didn't quite work out for science today uh, uh, with the tyres, and um, but it, it's his home Grand Prix next. Uh, maybe that will give him a, a, a bit of a boost uh, going into going into next week. 
and uh, if they want to forget this one pretty quickly, I, I, uh, I imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe that home field advantage might get Carlos Sainz onto the podium. You never know. So, Tom, uh, Antonio Giovinazzi in P12 in the Alfa Romeo came together with his teammate on the end of lap one, uh, causing the safety car. Um, but a fairly anonymous race other than that for Antonio Giovinazzi. Fairly anonymous race from a fairly anonymous team. I think I've made my feelings about Alfa Romeo very clear on previous podcasts. Uh, yeah, I think the only time I saw him in the entire race was when he passed Vettel. Uh, and that's, that's. I mean, I don't know if... If uh, I know years ago there was a there was a thing where Sauber were were uh, not paying their bills and so Bernie told the uh, cover coverage people that they under no uncertain terms are they to show Sauber in the race unless they have to. Uh, I don't know if something else is going on or whether they are just that anonymous and just don't seem to be doing anything. But uh, yeah, I mean he started twelfth, finished twelfth a lap down. Yeah, that's it. He, you know, took his teammate out. Not you know, not didn't take his teammate out, but he was involved in his teammate ending um, ending his race on lap one and that was it that's all you saw from him again just a completely uninspiring vanilla team um with just no real redeeming features apart from his haircut i quite like his haircut he does have a pretty cool haircut um, talent jesus <laughs> <laughs> from one uh a sort of anonymous race to a bit more of an atrocious race in relative terms sebastian vettel started p10 sam finishes p13 it's not what Aston Martin need. Yeah. Oh God. Um, <laughs> yeah. Everyone was so happy from yesterday, weren't they? Because oh yeah, Seb's, Seb's back. Yeah, let's go. Aston Martin are back. Yeah, let's go. But then, then again today, I think I think they're another team that's um, that that did another bad strategy called the tyres um, again. I think. Um, yeah, it was it was a horrible day for Vettel really because. He was obviously always going to be a disadvantage compared to the people behind him because obviously they're all starting on, on with fresh tyres. So he's he's obviously going to be a disadvantage. So I, I never really believed that he could stay in the points, to be honest. I think it would have took kind of a miracle to stay in the points because obviously the Aston is is really nowhere near where they were last year. And obviously they've been, they've been whining and whining and whining and whining on about these regulations. And it just doesn't seem to stop. Um, I think they need to get on with it and just figure out what they need to do next year, really. Because um, because it's the regulations have affected Mercedes in the same way, but we see Mercedes, they don't mind about it. They just get on with what they need to do. Aston Martin, yeah, it's, it's not been a good year for them so far. Um, yeah, it's, and it was a pretty anonymous and terrible race from Sebastian Vettel, as you said. Not really in much forward zone because, because of the strategy and the car that he's in, really. Yeah, I think he needs to start aiming for 11th in qualifying rather than 10th. <laughs> yeah, um, purposely get knocked out in Q2. That would probably be better for him, to be honest. I mean, that was kind of why teams started, you know, just not even going out in Q3. So, you know, it yeah, might exactly. be something of a valid strategy. <laughs> <laughs> but Alex, uh, his teammate Lance Stroll finishing behind him. Um, I missed how that happened. But yeah, that's... Uh, Again, just not another uh, result that Alpha, uh, Alpha, Aston Martin won. Yeah, there's not really much I can add on to that after, after what Sam said. He just didn't perfect. <laughs> uh, it's even worse for Stroll, I suppose, because uh, Vettel, for once, at least beat his teammate. Um, maybe I, th- I know that's not exactly, I know that's not what he's aiming for, but if there's anything that he can say from this weekend, he did it. And uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, it was just an awful weekend for Aston Martin. Full stop. Uh, you know, they uh, they really need to get back uh, and and claw some points uh, because it's not it's not going very well for them at all. And uh, it's it's looking it's looking a little bit of a mess, unfortunately. Yeah, very messy. Uh, so Tom Yuki Tsunoda, P15, the highest of the rookies to finish, but. You know, that's where he started, and we kind of expect a little bit more from uh, Yuki Tsunoda, at least. Yeah, I think the uh, Yuki Tsunoda hype train is very much uh, stuck in the station at the moment. Um, he's uh, obviously had a great, great start uh, in his first race, but since then, he's. Uh, I, I think it, it was unfair to think that he would, he could be as good as that all year. Um much I thought he would have a better race today, given that he's got lots of runoff, um, which he did use quite a lot, as we saw from the uh, track limits violations again. 
Um, I think did he get a penalty in the end for track limits? I know he was he got a final warning for it. Um, yeah, I, I know think... he got the warning, but I didn't see the penalty. Think, I don't think he got a penalty. No. no. Okay. Well, I say he uh, he. Uh, I, I think my most amusing moment of his race was when he passed Russell and Crofty said dicing with Alonso is like Alonso is three <laughs> places ahead of him. How can he possibly be dicing with Alonso? Uh, but yeah, he's um, to be honest, it was he was never really going to do anything with the strategy that that um, that. Alfatori gave him um, first to pit onto the hards on lap 21. Um, apart from that, his most entertaining thing was blocking Bottas while coming back on the track. Uh, he, he was always going to be in, in tyre conservation mode with very little pace from there on. And I just don't know what Alfatori are playing at with their strategies at the moment. It's almost like they, it's like every race uh, they've they've been they've tried something they probably didn't need to try. And they've taken a risk that they didn't need to take because they had the pace genuinely, and as a result, they just they're just hemorrhaging points, which is a, a real shame for, uh, for for their drivers. Because as I say, Sonoda could be getting could be getting points week in week out, but um, it's just not happening for him at the moment. And I do think you know, he is a great driver. He is a rookie. We need to look after him and nurture him, and don't get on that hype train too quickly. But um, yeah, it just. Just uh, just another another sloppy weekend, but again, not really his fault this time. Um, AlphaTauri need to take a good look at their uh, their strategy, to be honest. Yeah, and I think one of the things that AlphaTauri might uh, regret is these thrown away points, given how poorly Aston Martin are performing. You know, they could move up to fifth if uh, they take advantage of it, but at the minute, they're not taking advantage of it. Yeah, they've dropped behind Alpine this weekend as well. Alpine moved up two places. Bloody hell. In fact, Crofty, the Williams and the um, and the Alpine do look quite similar. Yeah, but it's his job to know the difference. Yeah, it is his if job. I knew the just... difference sitting on my sofa. <laughs> <laughs> he does get paid a lot of money to uh, know the difference between his cars, to be fair. So, yeah, I agree with you. He should be, he should be doing better, really. But it's classic. Cro- Crofty does that a lot, though, doesn't he? He gets mistaken. It's too exciting, Maybe, doesn't maybe he? they should give the role to someone who knows the difference between the two cars. Yeah, Alex Jakes. <laughs> or Tom Horrocks. Tom Horrocks, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom Horrocks. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Sam, let's move on to George Russell. You know, he started 11th. It looked all promising, but that Williams just seemed to be struggling so much with uh, the aerodynamics, this, uh, well, today at least. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it was it was a great lap for him yesterday to uh, put in P11. He was so close to Q3. That would have been great. But yeah, it's, it's very evident that the Williams pace is quite confined to a single lap at the moment. Um, uh, yeah, as you said, they're quite struggling with the error of this track, all, 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 the, all the elevation changes. Um, it really seemed to kind of hurt their car. And we just saw Russell just tumble down the order quite quickly. Um, there was one point where he was he was fighting with his teammate. Um, I have no idea what lap that was on, some in the middle of the race. Um, yeah, that was that, that was 30-ish. like that thirty-ish. Okay, we'll go, we'll go with that. Um, it was, <laughs> yeah, that was the only time I can really remember seeing him of any kind of note in the race. Um, but yeah, it's it's another finished race. It's another race he finishes ahead of Latifi, um, and yeah, it's just it's just it's just Williams, isn't it? They they look good in Saturdays at the moment, but they're still kind of they're still yet to really look like they're anywhere near scoring points on race day to be honest yeah it's it's still quite a while away it would seem but alex i can't believe i'm about to say this but mick schumacher actually made an overtake today so he ended up finishing 17th yeah it was uh out of the three races it's the best performance that he's done so far and um he he, he, got, he got involved in the battle with nicholas tfies williams and came out on top and um you know, he didn't really make any mistakes to him in, 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 during the race, uh, and and he got it he got it to the end, which is pretty much what what you can expect, pretty much pretty much what you expect from the half because uh, until until today they they were unquestionably the slowest on the grid, and uh, they've at least managed to beat one Williams. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it, they're, they're clearly not not where they want to be, but at, at least uh, they. They brought both cars home, and uh, Mick Schumacher, um, he, he did he did well today because uh, we we're probably quite questioning, you know, can he handle the pressure from the middle one? And uh, he had a bit of an inauspicious start, but at least today that um, he did he did okay, and uh, it, it was. 
Yeah, and uh, what will certainly uh, be taken away from today is despite falling back during the Blue Flags uh, eras, he still managed to keep coming back at Latifi and, you know, eventually overtake him. But Tom, Nicholas Latifi obviously finishing 18th. Um, We've already mentioned the Williams are having aerodynamic troubles today. But, you know, again, being overtaken by that Haas, that's a problem? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a problem. He was all looking so good for him early in the race as well. And he was, uh, you know, George was falling back um, like a house of cards. Um, and and then he actually passed him on pace. And I was thinking that it, he was doing okay. And the next thing I know, he didn't see it, but George got back past ahead of him and, and was way ahead. Um, one, of, um, one of the only three cars to have been lapped twice in the race um, and then being passed by a Haas. Fortunately, he... Um, uh, he he didn't suffer the ignominy of being passed by the other Hass because uh, that would have been a time to hang up your helmet, I think. Um, but he's uh, yeah, it just it just didn't it just didn't work for him today. Um, it's that Williams obviously it's peaky downforce. It's very windy at the top part of the circuit. It just didn't work on the track. Um, and over over a race distance, it just it was the I think it was probably the worst car on the grid today. Um, but given that George is so good and the other one is in Haas is so bad, um, that's why uh, they ended up finishing where they did. But uh, yeah, uh, it's not a good weekend for Williams. Um, I'm just glad I didn't predict George Russell for a point like someone connected to this podcast did last week. So uh, lol at you, George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and speaking of the other Haas driver, finishes 19th. Um... You know, there was some atrocious defending of drivers who were he was supposed to be letting through, Sam. You know, he got five blue flag warnings whilst Perez was catching him, whilst Perez was in the lead. Um, he got one blue flag warning for Lewis, but that was easily dealt with because there's such a pace difference between those two cars, especially on the uh, start-finish straight. So... Uh, Anything to add about the second Haas driver that nobody likes apart from his dad? Why why have you given me this one? God. Um, It's just the order. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. This guy, man. Um, Yeah, it's it's hard to add anything more disparaging than what you just said because, yeah, he just just seems like he's just... It seems like he can hardly drive the car. I know the car is a dog. The car is an absolute dog. But we've seen like with that Mick. dog made overtakes today. Yeah, but we see, but we've seen with Mick that at least he can like hang with at least Williams. But Mazepin finished. I don't know if I'm even allowed to say his name. He he was not be named. He finished <laughs> like over over a minute like behind Latifi, which is crazy. He's like he's like he's still in F two. Is the speed the speed? It's like he's in a different class of race. You know, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's if, yeah. Obviously, we know we know why he's there. Um, the money is obviously great, and I kind of wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he, he could change, like do let his um, like driving on the track do the talking, as he said a few months ago. But it's quite clear that he's he's not good enough for this this level. He really isn't. Yeah, uh, and I think it's also the case of if um, the FIA hadn't got rid of his F two penalty points. I think getting the penalty today might have given him that race ban. I'm not quite sure on the stats, but I think he actually accrued enough for a race ban in his last race last year. But because it was the end of the season, there's no ban. See, yeah, he picked up one penalty point today for the the Perez um, for blocking Perez. So I just I just don't get the logic that the FIA had there. So. Uh, Alex, sorry to give you him. There's not really much to talk about, but Kimi Raikkonen did at least make it around one lap today. Yeah, uh, it wasn't really what you expected from a driver's experience. It was it was a rookie mistake, unfortunately, from, from Kimi. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, it wasn't. Uh, I found out to find the right words, but uh, uh, it was a shame because he probably could have uh, fought for the tail end of the point. Uh, maybe maybe he then could have been up for grab for grab for an uh, But um, yeah, Kimmy just seemed to get caught out by the draft and uh, and, caught, and and caught his teammate. And sadly, that was the end of the race for him. But, uh, but mistakes happen. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm knowing Kimmy. Uh, I don't think he'll really think too much about it. He'll just move on to the next one. And uh, 
and they've like and uh, try get try and get the points there because they, they lost them in Imola, uh, and uh, they, they need to pull them back. Yeah, it's certainly not what uh, the team needed in terms of any potential points, but given where Giovinazzi finished, maybe points were on the cards for Raikkonen. He all, you know, we'll never know because he took himself, he kind of took himself out at the start of the race. So uh, let's move on to driver of the day. Now there have been several drivers touted, um, some for the memes, some because they started fourth and finished fourth. Uh, but let's uh, say, uh, Tom, who is your driver of the day, please? Certainly not Sergio Perez. <laughs> I, 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 the, the logic of that just baffles me. You know, he, he didn't really, he didn't show a lot of pace. They basically left him out there to try and ruin Hamilton's race and then give him a quick set of tyres towards the end and then finish way behind his teammate. No. Uh, for me, it's, uh, I mean, nobody today had a flawless race. Not even not even my boy Lando had a, had a perfect race. And I really don't want to give him driver of the day today because otherwise I'll look really, really biased. But for me, uh, Hamilton, Alonso, Ricardo, and Norris were probably the four standouts. Um, I think I'm... I'm slight. I don't know. I, I'm. I don't want to sound biased. But I'm slightly erring towards Ricardo, but he did overshoot his box. So I think no. I think I'm going to go with Alonso actually, uh, because he's uh, um, his qualifying wasn't great, but he recovered well, um, and to finish just behind his teammate uh, was a solid performance, and he had great pace at the end of the race as well. So yeah, I'm going to go with Alonso. So Alonso for Tom. How about you, Sam? Yeah, it, yeah, it's difficult because. It wasn't the greatest race of all time. It's not one we're going to remember for years to come, is it? Um, there was no kind of, there was no like standout kind of performance um, from anybody really, uh, <laughs> as Tom said. Um, it, it is going back to those those four drivers that you mentioned. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be tempted to give it to Alonso as well, but we said earlier he was like kind of anonymous throughout the first half of the race. Um, uh, I mean, pe one. people gave Perez driver of the season last season, who was also anonymous for the first half of the season. So, yeah, there is some logic to it. Yeah, there's like, yeah, fair play. Um, yeah, I'll, I think I'm going to go with, um, I think I'm just going to go with, with Lewis because he just managed to control the, control the race when he got in the leads. And at the start, he was on the back foot and he still managed to stabilize and, um, kind of win the race in a dominant fashion, really, which is which is just what he does, isn't it? Yeah, so. it was a very classic Lewis Hamilton performance today. Alex, who was your driver of the day? Yeah, I think I'm going to give it to Alonso as well. Uh, it's a bit too easy to give it to, to Hamilton. Um, just a typical, typical performance from him, but it wasn't his, it wasn't his best performance ever. Let's, let's, let's be honest. It was just another day at the office, really, for him. But. Uh, I think I think Alonso, considering where he was on Saturday, um, I, I think he really fought back strongly today, and uh, and the, and he was my driver of the day. Yeah, I think for me, based on the two overtakes of um, Max and Valtteri, uh, I my, personally myself, I'm giving it to Lewis. Um, but you know, as we mentioned, that's a standard Lewis Hamilton performance, but. That is the show. Uh, Grid Talk is available on Amazon as well as YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, Omni Studio, and Pocket Casts. Just search F1 Grid Talk. We have a huge back catalogue of shows with previews and reactions to qualifying and race results. We have a Reddit. Just search for the subreddit F1 Grid Talk. And we also have a Patreon for mics, lights, and better recording equipment. Also, make sure you subscribe so you're the first to know when each new weekly episode is released. We'll be back tomorrow to preview the spanish grand prix next weekend thank you very much for joining me tom sam and alex no worries thank you thank you and thank you very much for listening and goodbye see you in a bit <laughs>